Cut the cameras, I hate it. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Yes, I know it has been a while since I have posted a video, but I'm back. I'm back for good. I'm back with a new camera that I purchased recently, which is fun. And you know, a couple days ago, I was like, it's time, it's time to finally test out this new piece of technology that has found its way into my life. The way that I decided to test that out was um, at first take uh, mediocre photos because I'm not a photographer and I'm not very good at taking photos, but then I was like, you know what I am good at? I'm good at painting. So I should take a time-lapse video of me painting only one of my favorite artists of all time, Miguel. So um, yeah, let's get into it. I started by gridding out the piece. Recently, I learned about the grid method, and honestly, it's kind of incredible. I'm not very good at mapping out proportions to actually look like a real person, so whenever I do a drawing off of something I find off of Pinterest, it doesn't look like that person, which is fine, who cares, all you should be doing is making sure it looks like a human being. But I was like, I want to make some fan art. That should be totally fun and cool. So I looked up the grid method and yeah, that's what I did. It's worked pretty well. I did another Frank Ocean painting uh, that I have not posted. Um, I got 200 views on TikTok though, so. <laughs> but yeah, here's what that looks like. I started gridding it out and sure, it looked a little bit janky at first. His lips did not look the way that Miguel's lips look like in real life. And that is fine. Who cares? I finished gritting out the whole thing. It looked great. It looked fun and fresh and funky. And then, and then, it was time to paint. Now here's the problem. Once you start painting with oils, you can't really go back. You know, when I was younger, I never really understood why people would oil paint in the first place. And then I finally bought a set of like decent quality oil paints game changer. It changes everything. I never took a, like a class in high school or anything for painting or anything, so I just did not know about the versatility of oil paint, but once I did, I'm unstoppable. Wait, one second. This one I love. This is like the first big oil painting I've ever done in my life. So yeah, I was really proud of it. And then I did this one. This one, the problem wasn't with the oil paint, the problem was with me. You know, there's always room for improvement. It like, his skin is like gray. I do like the background though. I like a little gradient from pink to, to a lighter pink. But yeah, however, I decided to not use oil paint for the last two paintings I did on canvas paper. Big mistake, huge. So I ended up using acrylics. Now I have used acrylics many times in the past. In fact, that is what I used mainly other than watercolor and sketch pencils as a medium. Uh, the thing about acrylic, it sucks. It's not that good. Also, considering that I use like student grade ones like Liquitex, those ones are okay. In fact, if you're looking for like decent student grade acrylic paints, go with Liquitex. It's what the vast majority of people will tell you. However, I also have these other paints when I'm gonna go get them that I bought from uh, my my school's like student store. It's not gonna focus and that's fine. So these ones, there's like three other colors. They're like less than five dollars. So at the time I bought them because I wanted to use them for just like touching up little paintings or like making little mini tiny canvases for my friends or whatever. Again, big mistake, huge. These paints suck. <laughs> They're not very good. They dry out super easily. That's the problem with acrylic. With oil paint, like, it never dries out to the point that, like, when you're waiting for your painting to finally dry so you can, like, hang it up or whatever, it's, like, a week later and, you know, it's lost all its charm. With acrylic paints, they dry out in, like, literally two seconds, especially if you use cheaper ones, like I did, so they're just not as fun to use anymore. So that was the main problem. And I don't know if you can tell by looking at the time lapse or whatever, but I was really struggling. Again, because the paint dries so fast, the color matching does not match, you know, the actual picture or reference that you're working with. That's a really interesting, fun part about acrylic painting, is that it just dries out super fast if you don't invest enough money in decent paints. Anyways, I was going along, I was enjoying this. Miguel is one of my favorite artists. If you 
know me, you know that I listen to the album War and Leisure approximately three times a day. And you know what? That's just the way that I like to lead my life, and I think that you should do that too. In no way am I forcing my beliefs upon you, but yes, I'm forcing my beliefs upon you. Go listen to Miguel's War and Leisure. It's a great album. So I'm going along. I'm painting. I'm painting even more. I'm painting. I'm painting. I really actually like the reference I used because I normally just use like regular skin tone references where there's like no lighting differences and I don't really pay attention to where the light source is or whatever. Again, if you can't tell, all my art knowledge comes from YouTube and a the couple of classes I took when I was in sixth grade. I really like the blue because it's a fun, it's, it's just a different, you know, it's unique. It's something new. But then I got tired, so I decided to get up, stop painting, and then go to bed. Cut the cameras, as they say. The painting was finally starting to take form. As you can see, I finished his neck. But then we stumbled upon an issue. His sweatshirt. Listen, of all the things that I could be painting, all the, you know, all the beautiful things in this world that I could spend the time to really hone in on and observe the beauty of and try to replicate that in my own artistic style and expression, a sweatshirt is not even on the list. So I'm staring at the sweatshirt being like, um, I don't actually want to paint this. So what I do is I just cover it in a, in a layer of very clear, basically translucent black blue paint and call it a day. Then it's onto his hair. Miguel has very cool dreadlocks as I believe they're called and I'm painting through them having a grand time and then something happens. I realize that I haven't painted in the highlights. However, I like the painting the way it is so I decide to not do highlights. This is a controversial decision. Sorry. And then eventually, I finish. No, I don't finish. So time for a little backstory about this super cool silver paint. My father was like, hey, let's go to Home Depot. I will never say no to a trip to the Home Depot. It's almost as fun as like going to Ikea because you never know what you're gonna find at the Home Depot. You know, they just have so many aisles. There's so many places to get lost. So many random people who give you dirty looks because you sure don't look like you're supposed to be there. I'm looking for someone to help me find something for my father and then it catches my eye. These random, amazing gold metallic paints and they were only $2. $2 for paints. Cut the cameras, as they say. I decide to get those fun paints um, at first, when I poured it out, it gave me literally just clear varnish, but then I shook it up a little. So here is what those beautiful silver paints looked like. And here's the finished product. Wow. Incredible. Amazing. Never been seen before. Here's a second look. Does it actually look like Miguel? You know, yesterday I didn't think so at all. Yesterday I was like, I'm a failure. They, I've never done anything worse in my life. But no, I think it does look like Miguel. And Miguel, if you see this, I just want you to know that I love and appreciate your music so much and I would really like another album and if I could go on tour with you. You know, the thing is I've never actually been to a concert. I've been to a few Oregon Symphony concerts in my day, but I've been told that those don't count. I would like to go on a concert with you. I could do backup singing, I could do backup dancing. The singing is going to be better than the dancing, but you know, you take what you get. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, thank you, the viewer, even if you're not Miguel, for watching this video and supporting my channel and supporting my art, even though it's not very good all the time. So, the takeaways. What did we take away from, you know, this amazing, incredible time-lapse extravaganza? What did we learn? We learned that A, the grid method is super useful, especially if you are a new artist. Um, especially if you want to paint, if you want to draw or paint someone who you admire and, you know, actually have it look somewhat like them. Second, I learned acrylic paint is my enemy. You know, I'm probably not going to even paint acrylic unless I'm forced to for the next couple of months. Honestly, this experience was traumatizing enough. And third, Miguel is amazing. And fourth, so is oil paint. Okay, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for listening to me ramble on and on and on about the most random obscure things that really don't even have anything remotely to do with art. Um, but I appreciate you watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you would like to. 
And yeah, cut the cameras, as they say.